So you wanna know how to set up the Bamboo Lab A1? Well, this is the video for you. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Okay, so I wasn't gonna record this part of the build, and I was just gonna do a montage. But then I opened the instructions, and I think it's important to point out some of the things you're gonna see with the brand new Bamboo Lab A1, especially during the assembly. So the first thing I noticed <clears throat> is that the first step wants us to put the build plate on uh, right away. I'm gonna wait to the end of that because the next step has us turning this over. So we're gonna start there. So we're gonna turn over the machine on its side. I have to tell you, this is very light for a base of a 3D printing machine. As you can see right here, there are four red bolts or red circles here. Those are the shipping bolts for the lock that locks this plate in place while it's shipping. So we need to get those out. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna turn my machine over here just a little bit. And in the, in, in the kit they sent is your Allen wrench. If you don't have any other Allen wrenches or T handles or something like that, they did ship us some. It is in this along with the screws we're gonna need and uh, pretty much everything we're gonna need for this printer. So find this box, open it up, and grab your Allen wrench. They kind of made T-handles. They did this with the uh, A1 Mini as well. I actually like that a lot, and it makes it so much easier for getting these things out. So I'm gonna speed through taking these bolts out, and we'll jump to the next step. So the next thing we need to do uh, now that this is free is put the gantry on the base, or should I say under the base. So we're gonna move this over just a little bit. I'm going to take our gantry and bring it over like this. This is where you wanna pull off any of the packing uh, tape that's still on here. In my case, there's a lot still on there. And we're going to swing that arm out like that, that little cable there. So it looks like that. Then we're gonna take our base. So this is the front of the machine here facing you. And it looks like we're going to take our base and come in from the front at an angle like that and set it straight down. Maybe, there we go, set it straight down. It kind of comes in at an angle and then it drops right into place. So it is all solid and that is one with the base. Next it wants us to unlock the tool head and cut the zip ties and, and get the cardboard off of the gantry. So that's what we're gonna start doing now. We're gonna start cutting our uh, zip ties here that holds this in for shipping. I really do think they do a great job packing these things for shipping um, with all the different locks they put in with the cardboard, with the zip ties, foam inside of here. So this thing has a much less likelihood of getting damaged in shipping, which is, which is awesome. Expose our gantry for the first time. And then it looks like just this, bam. And that exposes our gantry completely in our hot end, and it's on to the next step. Now that we got that done, we need to remove the Y-axis cover in order to mount our gantry to our base. And to do that, we're gonna slide the bed forward so it's facing that way forward. We're gonna lift up like that, and we're gonna pull off this really nice cover. And what that actually covers up is all of the insides there. You can kind of see it. It's pretty cool. So now the next step is actually securing this base down. And it's really cool because all of these, uh, hopefully you can see this, all of the circles there in green is where we're gonna put screws, I believe. I love that they make it so easy and user-friendly, especially for people that's their first 3D printer. They just, they color code things. They make it so simple. So. Let's get these screws in and we'll be right back. So real quick, I wanted to point this out. In the box that came with all the little parts and the Allen wrenches are bags of screws and they're each individually labeled. This one says for base housing. So I know that I'm gonna grab this bag of screws and we're gonna use that in the base housing, like securing it down. So we're gonna put these in the little green circles, tighten them down and we're gonna be locked in. So I got all 12 of these bolts or, or screws, or whatever you wanna call them, into the base to hold down our gantry, and this thing is super solid. Once again, I wanna point out that uh, all of the circles here that you can see in green, hopefully you can see that in green, are where the screws go. So it made it incredibly easy. You just dropped a bunch in, and then I tightened them all up. On to the next step. The next step is just simply putting our Y-axis cover back on, and it just slides through like that. 
and it clips right into the front. There's little like uh, clips and it drops in and we're good to go. So this looks really clean now. It's covered up. You don't see any of that uh, other stuff underneath. We're good to go to the next step. So this next part is gonna be a little tricky to show you, but I'm gonna do my best using the foam that came with the package. So they want you to lay it on its back and then we're gonna insert the cables up underneath and secure them. To do that, what they want you to do is lay it on this back on a table um, very carefully, like so. I'm gonna try to turn this around. I'm gonna give you the best view I can of this. There you go. Now it's laying on its back and secured and we can work on getting the cables secured underneath. While I'm doing that, I just realized that I forgot to cut one of the zip ties off of the upright, so don't forget that. This is the cable we need to plug in. We need to take the plastic off of it and you can see there's some cables and a USB-C connection as well. They are color coded. There's a green, a yellow and a USB-C. I believe this goes up into here like that. So it sits here like this. Then you plug green in like that. You plug yellow in. There we go. Then you plug that one in over there. My fault. Wrong one. And that goes up. There is a screw here that we need to secure. So we'll grab our Allen wrench and we'll secure. There's, there's already a screw in here. So we just need to secure it in so nothing moves. And that screw actually came pre-installed right here. All right, I thought I'd get you up a little bit closer so you can see this is where, this is the piece I screwed down. Here's our two connectors. That's our USB-C part. So next we need to get this cable here, which I've already taken off the tape, up into here. And to do that, we can put it through a little channel lock that's, that's sitting right here. And basically I'm gonna pop it open with the little Allen wrench we got, like that. I'm gonna run it up the uh, channel that's already built in here, like this. Run it through here, like that. Make sure it's nice and flush. Tuck that in so it's nice and ran here. And then all we have to do is plug it in at the top, like that. So everything is in here, it's nice and flush. It's gonna sit down in here and it won't be bothered at all when we tip our printer back up. So once we're done, we can work on tipping our printer back up, like this and we can get rid of that uh, shipping material that came. Now this is two pieces in case you wanna do this. It's the big piece that was in the top and then the next piece underneath, I just set them together like that. That way it was thick enough to set that printer on its back. So we'll toss that underneath like that. I am gonna take the last plastic off because I forgot to do that. And we need to rotate our screen around, something like that. <laughs> Super simple, it just spins, it just, Pop, just like that. I like that design, cool. The next thing we need to do is grab our purge wipe tower. We're gonna slide our hot end over a little bit out of the way. We're gonna take our purge wipe tower. This is just like the A1 Mini, pretty close. Um, very, very close actually. We're gonna slide it into the back of the gantry like that so it sits right here. Then we're gonna find the bag named purge wiper. We're gonna put a screw in right from the bottom, right in the center. It's all detailed very well in the manual, but I like to go through these builds sometimes, and, and this has actually been kind of a fun one. I, I'm enjoying this. So this is just gonna screw in. It'll just take a second, and your purge wipe tower is now in and tight. So there you go. Next, we need to build our AMS light and get that going. So we're gonna need the stand. We're gonna need the AMS light itself, and it's numbered one, two, three and four, so it's pretty easy and it just sits down on the stand like so. It lines up, uh, basically you can line up the little screw holes and then there's going to be two screws, one on each side. So there's one up here and one right there and one here and one there. And it's super simple, you just grab the bag that is labeled AMS stand and screw your screws in right there. Two on this side, two on that side, and we're done. 
let's keep going. Next, it's time to put our spool holders on and just like the A1 Mini, they're doing that color coded. So it's very simple to go through this part. So there's four of them, one, two, three, and four and they're all color coded, like this one's yellow. So I know that I can come down here, find the yellow one in the front, kind of spin it around until it goes in and you're done. This one's green, we're gonna do the same thing on this side, done, spin it around, that's yellow. Not only are they color coded, there's actual shapes, um, rectangles and octagons, I believe, or maybe they're hexagons, I'm not sure. I can't tell, <laughs> I forgot. Anyways, jump them in. Push them in uh, when they fit and you'll be secured and locked in. And that's what it should look like when we're done putting it on the stand and putting our spool holders on. So next we're gonna need the bag of PTFE tubing that comes with it. We're gonna need to put our AMS on this side of the printer. So you wanna get your printer here, your AMS here, and then we can start putting some tubes in. This is another uh, pretty easy step. If you did the A1 Mini, this is identical to that, just different size tubes. If you didn't do an A1 Mini, that's okay. We got you. So there are different size tubes in here. There's actually like a silicone piece right here holding them where they should be, which is a pretty dang smart thing. They just are making this printer so easy to put together, especially for beginners. We're gonna take the longer two here and we're gonna push those into the farther PTFE couplers or the Bowden couplers like this, like that. We're gonna take the shorter of the two, and we're gonna put them in the two Bowden couplers that are the closest, and we should have something that looks like this. Then what you wanna do is just push these into the hot end. Uh, personally, I like to keep the longer ones, if I can match them up, I like to keep those like farther away, but you can do whatever you wanna do, just don't get them all tangled up. If you need to get them out, push the coupler down, carefully and then pull up on the tube and it should pop out. There we go. I just wanna make sure they're nice and even. There we go. So once you got all four in, it should look like that. You can move this down a little bit closer. We have our silicone piece holding everything together and it looks really good. Everything's ready to go on the AMS, but I believe we gotta plug it in next. Last thing we need to do on the hot end is pull up our data cable here and uh, get that clipped in. So I'm gonna rotate that a little bit, clip that into the open spot, and then everything's good to go and being held up here. Then in the back of the machine, it's gonna be super hard to see this, but there is one cable. You take the twist tie off, the cable is about that long right there, and there's just a port, you plug it straight into the back of the machine. It's very simple, it's a four prong port. There's actually two ports, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Pick one of them, plug it in, and then we're gonna keep moving. One of the last things we need to do is put our build surface on, because I didn't do that at the beginning. So we are just gonna peel off uh, the plastic that they have here. There is a peel sticker right there. And we're gonna remove that plastic. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh la la. Then we're gonna take out our build plate here. There we go. It's the gold textured plate. We're gonna take that, we're gonna slide it right to the back and there's little tabs in the back and just drop it on. It fits in one way, it tabs in perfect, so you're gonna get that perfect every time. You don't have to worry about it being off a little bit. So super easy. Uh, like I said, we're just gonna take it, pull it back to the back and let it go. And that's that, our build surface is put on. The last thing we need to do is just plug the printer in. Uh, not unlike the A1 Mini, they actually gave you a full size power cable for this one, it's not built in. The A1 Mini had that built in power cable. So I'm actually gonna use a power cable that I already have here. But basically all we gotta do is take our power cable, whoosh, whoosh, plug it in to the back. All we have to do now is turn this bad boy on. Next we need to come to the screen after it boots up and peel our plastic. Then hit the start button, then go to English or whatever language you need, then North America. And then we need to connect this to our Wi-Fi. So we're gonna do a uh, select Wi-Fi and I'll be right back after I connect. The next thing you wanna do is use the QR code that's hiding under my thumb here to scan in your Bamboo Handy app and get it connected. 
Now, if you wanna skip all of this and not use the Wi-Fi, not use the network, you can definitely do that. Just hit the skip button below. But at this time, I'm gonna grab my app, scan it in, and I'll be right back. In the app, all you have to do is go to the devices button, which is in the bottom middle, or if you moved it to the front page, that's fine too. But go to devices, then there's a plus sign way up here. Click that plus sign. And that brings us to this screen and then click the button up here to scan a QR code like that. I'm gonna scan mine now and I'll be right back. Once you scan it, the machine will say log in successfully and your printer will tell you to unlock the gantry. This is still a picture of the A1 Mini because we're in beta, but I imagine this is gonna be changed out to the A1 when we get closer to launch. Then we hit confirm. Once you hit confirm, it adds it to the list of your printers and you're good to go. Once we get through all that, it needs to do an initial calibration. So I'm gonna leave both of these checked and we're gonna hit start and do the calibrating. As you can see, it's gonna do the motor noise cancellation first and it gives you a graph of where it's at, what it's actually doing, and it's gonna go through all of these tests. It's gonna go through all of these tests and then we're gonna to go to the next calibration. This should take about six minutes. Once calibration is done, just touch the screen and you're all set. Now, if you're like me, there's probably an update for the firmware, so I wanna do that because we have to rerun all of the calibration after we update the firmware. So go to settings, firmware, update, and it'll start updating your firmware right over the air if you chose to connect it to your Wi-Fi. It's gonna run through this, and then we're gonna run the calibrations again, and then it's time for a first print. So while that's auto-leveling, I'm gonna go ahead and load some filament. Bamboo Lab sent me some of their PLA, and I really like this stuff. This is the PLA Basic. This one is going to be orange. And one of the coolest things is that it comes on a reusable spool. So this is PLA Basic. It's reusable and you can refill this when you run out. The other cool thing about these spools is they do have RFID chips in here and the printers actually read them automatically. They know what color, they know pretty much everything about this spool right from that RFID chip. It is super cool and all of the Bamboo Lab printers use that chip. And when you refill this, you actually get a new chip to use so you don't have to use the same color over and over. I could refill this with blue, pop the new uh, RFID chip for the blue one in here and we'll be good to go. So all you have to do is open up your spool, take out your desiccant pack, and then you wanna flip this around and untape the front here. Now I usually cut the end off here at about a 45 degree angle and I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so now to put it in, we are going to push this on the spool like so, make sure it's good and on there. Then from underneath, you're gonna grab, push this in, Oop, you're gonna push it in, push up on here and just push your filament in like that. And that's it, it'll actually start loading it. You'll see the spool moving here. It actually is loading it up through. And that's it, your spool is loaded. I'm gonna load the other three real quick. Now the calibration is done, it's time for our first print. We have our filament loaded up and I'm gonna go ahead and touch that. I'm gonna go down and find our Benchy because we have to do that. I'm gonna touch the Benchy it's gonna warn that the bed temp exceeds filament, blah, blah, blah. Hit confirm. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Uh, it says use the AMS. We're gonna do bed leveling and flow calibration. Um, no time lapse right now, but we're gonna hit next. I'm gonna choose what color we want. So we have orange, black, gray, and uh, brown. So um, let's do something that's gonna show off nicely. You know, I've never done a brown benchy, so let's do brown and print, and we're off. I just wanted to jump in because the benchy is only a few minutes from being done, and it just amazes me every time I see one of these printers how fast this printing has gotten. Uh, it is just, it's awesome for new users. You're gonna get really nice prints way faster off of the build plate. It is just awesome for everybody who starts printing with these printers to see how fast and how good of quality they really are. This thing is really rocking and I love it. And that's it, it's done. The Benchy is right here and it only took about 14 minutes of actual print time. That's pretty crazy compared to some of the machines we test that are like uh, one and a half to two and a half hours for this little guy. It looks very good. Uh, check out the review video if you haven't seen it. 
I did some close-up shots of the Benchy, but in this video, I just wanted to show you a little bit on how to put this thing together, how to get it assembled, and the steps that are entailed in that. I haven't done a step-by-step -step build video in a while. Hope you enjoy. If you got an A1, let me know in the comments what you think. And if you haven't seen the review video, like I said, check it out. It'll be right here.